here we are at the top of the Paso Poi Doi. We've done the Campolongo, we've now done the Poi Doi. We're going to go down the Poi Doi and we're going to do the Gardena. Here's Christelle with the van and Christelle's got the food and the orange segments everything you need to keep you going thanks Christelle You're welcome. I've cycled up with Ian McPhee known as Nanny and Ian has a Pinarello Dogma and it's a Bradley Wiggins version and there you can see sky on the seat post and there you can see Wigo's logo and in the background you can hear the motorcyclists who are plaguing the route. Happy days! Looking down from the top of the Paso Pordoi and we're just about to start this descent. Hold on to your hats boys! top of the Paso de Stella, yeah. Stella, sorry, and what you can hear in the background <laughs> is, is bloody, motorbike. bloody motorbikes. We are plagued by motorbikes. And a car trying to ram you, but as we he actually had been up and had an actual, I think, miles he in the car. I expect a few people to go. It's a holiday. What? Oh, What's a virgin, Daddy? <laughs> Age five. And here we are at the summit of the Gardena. And in the picture there we can see Ian, known as Nanny McPhee, Christelle, one of the guides, and hidden behind Christelle, there we are, is Roz. Well done guys. Now we were going to be doing the medium route, but the weather is closing in, and we've been advised that it's too risky. So we're going to do the short route and go back to the hotel. And here comes one of those bloody motorbike and this guy is not one of ours LA LA day three of the classic goals of the Dolomites completed and today was the day of the Maratona now there are three routes there's the full route which is about 138 kilometers uh, there's a medium route and then there's a short route. I had wanted to do the full route and that was one of the reasons for coming on this trip. Um, but my experience over the last couple of days told me that I'm just not up to it at the moment. So I was going to do the medium route uh, with my mate Ian, known as Nanny McPhee. And we set off uh, bright and early. Actually it wasn't that early. They didn't do breakfast in the till half past seven. So we set off at about quarter past eight and we rolled down the hill into La Villa and then there is a long drag, it's a, it's a climb, but it's not much of a climb, into Corvara and again I felt uh, out of breath. don't know why, but it's the, maybe it's the altitude, maybe I'm just feeling out of breath. So got to Corvara and then you start the first climb which is the Campo Longo. And again, I found it hard, got to admit. Um, but uh, nearing the top, um, didn't realise I was nearing the top, so it was a nice surprise when we did actually get up to the top. Uh, me and Ian running, riding pretty much together, him mostly in front. So at the Campo Longo, we then put on our jackets and we descended down into Araba, 
where we then take the climb of the Port Doi. Um, Port Doi, another one of those climbs, only about 7%, 7 8% average, something like that. And I was okay on the Port Doi, had uh, warmed up a bit. Um, so at the top, we stopped, had a coffee, uh, took a couple of photos, met the van, and then we descended down from the uh, Port Doi, and then immediately following the descent, you start the climb of the Sella, Paso de Sella, um, which was, again, quite hard, um, but okay, uh, some fairly long, fairly steepish sections, a bit like Von Tu in some respects. Uh, got to the top of the cellar, uh, then took a few photos, and then we descend again, and then you climb again up the Gardena. Uh, weather had started to change a bit, it was getting a little bit cloudy, a little bit damp. Uh, got to the top of the Gardena and met Christel with the van, uh, and the weather was looking decidedly iffy. So Ian and I decided that on the whole, Although we felt we could do the medium route, and I'm being honest here, I, I felt better at the top of the Gardena, and I felt, yes, I could do the medium route. But we decided that discretion was the better part of Valerie, and we would head back to the hotel. So we had a, another nice, very nice descent into Corvara, uh, where we stopped at a pizza restaurant, Ian and I, um, eating a lot of pizzas on this trip. Uh, it was just at the end of serving, there was a, a few people in the garden. Um, there was a lady with a young baby playing, playing catch with a, a, a man who was sitting on a bench. So she would throw the baby at him and he would call, catch it and he would throw it to her and, and she would catch it. It was like fairly risky activity uh, to be doing. Anyway, um, there was an enormous Alsatian, uh, the size of, a, size of a pony, I would say, who was uh, watching this game of catch. Uh, going on and, and really slathering at the chops waiting for this baby to fall. Anyway, it didn't fall. Um, so the man then got on a, uh, a big mountain bike or a fat bike, I think it's called, big fat wheels, uh, and started riding up and down on the sort of grass behind where we were eating uh, until he kind of uh, hit a ditch whereupon he somersaulted off the bike, at which uh, uh, we had a good laugh, of course, uh, in German. And just as we were finishing our, our pizza, a group of nuns uh, appeared who, who must have been hiding uh, in the garden. There was about half a dozen of them, nuns, dressed in their grey grey habit. Anyway, they wished us a uh, good morrow, and, and we returned the compliment. Uh, got back on our bikes, and it, it started to, to rain by now. So uh, carried on down into the, the main part of Corvara, uh, turned left, uh, heading down the road, at which point I was nearly taken out by a, a coach which managed to sort of force me against the barriers, uh, cue uh, much, much anger and a certain amount of swearing uh, at the coach which disappeared off into the distance. So we had a nice fast descent into La Via and then the final climb back up to hotel. It, it, was, it was raining at this point but it wasn't raining very much, um, although it was distinctly, it was distinctly iffy. So I think we made the right call uh, with the weather. If I, it sounds like I'm trying to justify myself here. I, maybe I am a little bit, but I think if I felt that I couldn't do the medium route, then I, I would have been quite disappointed not to have done it. But I do genuinely feel that I could have done it, and therefore I'm not overly uh, disappointed that I didn't do it, if that makes sense. Um, but knowing what is involved in the Maratona full route, um, because although we descended the Paso Jao rather than climbed it from the, the south side, and the full Maratona would have climbed it from the south side, it's, it's a tough climb, but now I know what it's like. Uh, and the final climb, which is the climb of the Falzarego, uh, was the climb that we did on Sunday uh, as part of the challenge route. So being familiar now with the full marathon route gives me the confidence and certainly did the desire because it is a fabulous location. The, the scenery is absolutely breathtaking 
and we were running out of superlatives. I was certainly running out of superlatives, but it is a fabulous place to ride your bike. One big exception, which I may have commented on before, and that is the thousands of motorbikes. And they seem determined to make as much noise as they possibly can riding around these mountain roads. The other thing is there is a preponderance of sports cars, lots of Porsches, lots of Mercedes, a couple of Ferraris, all driven by uh, middle-aged men and mostly sitting beside them their, their consolation trophy wives. You very rarely see the woman driving, which may say something about people who drive large, expensive sports cars. Who knows? See you next time.